so a lot easier to catch. I'm not saying that for you, matey, but they are easier to catch. Um, they're not, they get big ones too, but not the consistent big size we get sales short here. Um, and uh, they'll take lures really easy, like hard bodies and stuff like that. I didn't actually even bring any hard bodies tonight because they just don't seem to work around here very good. So, but you go down to over the border and you start catching them off the rocks with the hard bodies, you know. So, same, same hat applies with whiting. Whiting up here very hard to catch on uh, stick baits and poppers. You'll catch them, but you won't catch them. Like, if you go tweed, south, they just jump all over your lures. So, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's a new South Wales thing. I don't know what it is. But that's the way it is. And, um, but we do get a lot of jew fish here. The river system, mainly the Logan River, is what holds most of the jew that we get. Um, I do think they are transit up and down the coastline offshore as well, but it's mainly uh, from the Logan River that feeds Jumping Pier and I think even maybe the Seaway. Um, it's, it's just, there's so many jew there. For those of you who cast down up there for prawns, you get heaps of little jewies in cast down. You don't get them here much in the Rain River or Coombe River, but you will get heaps in the Logan River when you're cast netting. So, it's just a great um, fishery habitat to breed little chewies. They do grow quite quick. And um, the ones we get in the seaway tend to be, years ago we used to catch really big ones there, but they tend to be more that sort of 65 to maybe a metre or 95 centimetre size. I don't know if you guys have found that, but um, that seems to be the size. You will get bigger ones um, at night time, but not so much during the day. Okay, so if you want to put the time in at night time, the tides just the next couple of days are really good, plus you get the full moon. So you've got high tide like seven or eight at night. Um, and you've got, um, or will be by, by the weekend. Um, and you've got um, just that sort of one or two hour window just prior to the high tide, just after, um, that you could fish for the dewies at night time. You need to have um, obviously live pike, live mullet, yakas and slimies are good, but um, if the swell's small, you can go ashore in the afternoon and get it, come back in. But in that case, uh, unless your boat's small, I'd be going definitely to the blocks or out the local reef. It's much easier to catch the dew out offshore than it's the seaway. Uh, seaway, you get a lot of snags, and you got only a short period with the, with the current. Okay, so um, but get into your tackle that you need for the seaway. Um, I fish my hook size down a bit, so when I'm offshore, I'm using like eight O's or ten O's or sevens at the smallest. The seaway, I'm using sort of anywhere from fours to sixes, depends on what bait I'm using. If I can't get mullet or pike, I'll use herring. I put a lot of dew and herring in the seaway. Um, and I'll use probably four O's or five O octopus style. Um, I snell my hooks always. I never use single hooks for Jew. Um, there's a funny thing too, like a lot of people say um, you let Jewies fondle the bait and then they turn around in their mouth while they're running and you let it run, 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 run. You've probably all heard that. Um, if you're using a single hook, that may be the case. When you're using a double hook, you don't, you go, go hard. As soon as they bite and pull, you pull straight up. You'll get always that bottom hook, always seems to get them in the mouth. Um, but when you're running a single hook, it's a bit of a different scenario with the, with the strike of the fish. So uh, for those of you who have missed fish, a few easy, sort of let it go, let it go, let it go, and you let it go too long, and they, they've obviously either pulled the bait off the hook, or they've just spat it out, it wasn't quite right. Um, but when you use that second hook, you'll always get that grumble, grumble feeling, and it's like a boom boom and then there's a bit of a hard pull and that's when you strike hard. So when you use the two hook rig, that's what you want to do. And your hookup rate's about like nearly 100%. Okay. Does everyone here know, who doesn't know how to snell a hook together? Everyone knows how to do it? Just jump on, on our YouTube thing and you can see. <laughs> right, mate? <laughs> Just jump on it. Okay. Just jump on our YouTube um, uh, channel and there's an easy way to do it. You, normally you twist the loop around and over the hook, over the hook, over the hook and then pull it up from that way. Um, but when the way we do it, I do it easier, is just to loop the bottom of the hook. I know you can't see it in the back, so I'm not going to show you tonight, but um, I'll just show you on the board though. I'll show you on the board and draw it. So that's your, like your octopus style hook. Point up there. And what you do is you um, lay the line so that's your leader there. You go always through the top of the hook, don't go that way. Always go the top end there. Okay, come along. And you need to make it obviously long enough to allow the second hook to go on. So I always give it a bit, a bit extra. Um, and then loop it up like that. And then you just start wrapping it. I'll show you as I'm doing it sort of thing here. I'm trying to show you that at the same time. 
it's really important that you watch this and get it right. Has anyone ever had their knots come undone on snail hooks? Yeah. Do you do? Yeah, and it work all right? Yeah. yeah, good mate. That's the way to do it. So a lot of people have problems with hooks coming undone. They seem to be not tight and they just unravel. Have that problem, Dave? No, good man. Um, so this will eliminate that, I hope. But just watch our YouTube, it'll show you on there, okay? Let's do it on one hook. So, as I said, the hook's positioned that way. Go through the top, pull down, and then loop it back up, like so, and hold the loop there, okay, which is here. You can make that a bit shorter, actually. Like that. And then you hold in the loop here, like so. And then you just wrap up towards the front, and as you're doing it, hold the loop and pull the loop back down tight as you're doing it. So now I'm using this piece of line here and wrapping up this way. You keep going up, going up, going up. Well, that's about five or six over the top. Put my glasses on, sorry, guys. Keep the, keep the loops really tight. I know this is the boring part, getting the gear ready, the fishing part is the happy part, but <laughs> you've got to do this anyhow. Then once you get to that point there, you then get this piece of line, which is quite long, and thread it back through the bottom loop there, just like so. Actually, where are you going to do it? And then just pull it down tight, like so, and it just looks like, like that. You can put it around the bushel, whatever the hook you want. But I made that obviously very short, but I'd make that probably, if I was using a, say, a a bait around that size, that'd be probably about that, that long on the end of the hook, right? And then I'm gonna do either snell the bottom hook or just do a uni knot on the top of it. But I always allow more than I need uh, in the in the lead up because if you have it too tight, um, you can't get that hook down halfway down the fish and also it'll bend the fish as well. So you don't want the spin. It's gotta be able to move around without any um, <coughs> sort of resistance. So pull that, um, uh, that goes back through here, you pull it down and pull on that at the same time, those two there like that, and lock it up, and then pull it up to the top here, and then that, that gives you the length that you need down here. And I'll do a uni knot for a for another smell. We'll get to that later. Um, so, getting your hooks right is number one. So, fish in the seaway, as I said before, four rows and five rows, a lot smaller hook. Um, herring wise, so I'm using herring uh, on all my bait fish. I'm going to pick up um, a pilcher when it comes around defrosted shortly. Um, but imagine it's a little herring. So I always put one hook through, sometimes I do for um, keys and amberjack and everything else. So I'm just trying to find the rubber here. Sorry. So um, if this is your fish here. Can you see that down the back, okay, guys? I tried to big one for you. So, um, and uh, I'm going to do two two views of it because this is really important to get your bait hooked on right. Because you're probably all in the same scenario where you put the bait on and then it falls off. You know, had that happen before? Yeah. yeah. Or you pull it up because one hook's fallen out of it for some reason. So this is looking down on top. So that's his eyes there. That's his dorsal fin, and uh, whatever back fin there is. Um, and imagine that's his backbone through the middle here, right? And then on this one here, that's his eye, and that's his dorsal fin there. Whatever. So, um, what I do with the hook, red one, um, I put it through uh, around about looking here. Just past his dorsal fin, uh, so I'm piercing it probably around here, okay, which is around here, and it's about that height, so not quite his spine, just above his spine. But you remember he's got his frame, which is his his backbone, okay? Sorry, Dave, if you can see this, sorry, guys. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, so I'm piercing it about here, but that's down there, okay? And I'll go through with the hook. So that's the whole eye hook hanging out there. 
and the hook's actually internal and it doesn't touch the spine but it comes out here like that, oh, sorry, the barbs that way. So looking here, um, you'll see the eye of the hook hanging out there and this will be um, internal. And Is that the top hook or bottom hook? Right? That's the bottom hook, the, the, the second hook. But it's actually that's actually it's actually sitting there, not there. So because you know it's like flat, so it lines up with the eye of the hook. But it's in that position there, if that makes sense. So how deep are you going there, Doug? Uh, you're not going as far as as that spine. You're not going as far as this backbone. So you you're sort of so just skimming, skin. just skimming his backbone. Okay. So years ago, I used to stick it right through the whole thing, and they fall off. They always fall off. But when you pierce the skin, it's a lot hardier than the body. So it works a lot better. Um, and then my second, my second one, the line's quite loose. Um, this does pop out sometimes. There's two ways you can do it. If the fish are there and you know you're going to get a bite pretty quick, I go always up through here and out through the top. The bait's not going to live as long because he can't open his mouth and breathe whatever he does. Um, so you're pinning him more or less, but it never falls out. Okay. But when you go through this way, through the hook, through through the nostril and out the other side here and that's his mouth there, um, it can fall out. So if the fish are um, uh, you know, a bit quiet and he's going to be there for a while, you have to do it that way. He has to be able to move his bottom mouth, otherwise he'll die quicker. So but, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Uh, with that bottom hook, so yep. you're not actually going from one side through to the other, you're going in and back out the same side. Uh, <laughs> this one here, mate, or this one? No, the, the bottom hook. This one here, no. Yeah. I'm only I'm skin, skimming inside of one side of his fillet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And piercing the skin here and popping it back out here. Yeah. Yeah, and the rest is hidden inside. So you'll only see, I mean, you can see this hook here in the distance, but you'll see that's probably that much sticking out of the side of him. Okay. okay. And just that sticking out, the rest is internal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just, just get back to the hook. So, beat, not circle. Uh, not circle, no. So circle hooks uh, for Jewies, I, I haven't had much, much luck on, but the marlin stuff is good. But uh, Jewish fumble, fumble with the bait. Yeah. So uh, you need to be uh, like, you need to hook the fish. Yeah. How many people use circle hooks for Jewies? And how do you go, mate? Did you get a few? Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah. I think, um, I think I, obviously they work. They work or circle hooks work. I just wouldn't use them, you know. Um, but I run my, it's, this is a separate way too, which you might run a sinker on a trace, do you, mate? Do you run your sinker or right on the, on the bait? Oh, yeah, sinker. On trace? Oh, like a Pat Noster style? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right, yeah. So circle hooks work really well when they're loose. Um, I run my sinker right on top of the head. Okay. So in that case, the J-hook seems to work better than the circle hook because the circle hook is quite rigid. Yeah. yeah. Um, but anyhow, just try that next time you, you're doing it. So there you go. Um, but keep, keep the hook above the spine, the center spine, up in that area, and just pass the dorsal around the dorsal. Between the dorsal, those two fins there, there's a spot. The honey hole, um, and most of the fish are on that hook. Most of the fish. Okay. Doesn't matter if the jewelry's that big or they're you know, meter thirty and twenty kilos. Okay. So getting back to the hook size, so it all depends on your bait. So, how big was that? Oh, the bait fish. Yeah, please. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. You frosting it for me in the microwave. Perfect. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Cheers. Thank you. Um, so. Um, if I'm using herrings, it's the same scenario, but just smaller, okay, so using 4 hooks, 4 octopus, and uh, using lighter lead, I'm using 40 pound lead if I'm using herrings, um, and I'll use, uh, in the seaway, I don't tend to use more than 60, 40 or 60, if I'm chasing nighttime bigger jew, I'll, chase, I'll use 60, if I'm chasing the little ones, I'll use 30 fluorocarbon or 40 um, normal leader, hard leader. So, um, just getting back to here, so... That hook there in that position there will actually go through like this and stick out here sort of in his upper part, not his bottom part of his mouth. In the upper part of his uh, but the other way, you're pinning it this way. So the hook's going to be sticking out here and it's going to be internal and it'll come out, obviously you can line with that, but that way. So it's gone through the bottom and out through the top and sticking out. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So that's the two ways you do it. This way is very good if the fish are really on. It's quick, it's hard, it's very hard for them to pull it off, and you don't miss.
This way here sometimes that can fall out and you'll end up pulling up sideways. It'll be, you'll feel it, you'll feel a bit heavier when you're just testing your, your bait and you know that hook's fallen out so you've got to slide it to slightly wind it up, don't want it too fast because that can maybe rip out or it'll damage him so just bring it up. Live baits are crucial when you do fishing. It's like if you use pilchers, you might get a couple if you're lucky if they're really thick. Uh, only one time I lived and that was right off, offshore up near Port Lookout. We smashed it one day on, on Billy's up to like 20, 30 kilos many years ago, 20 something years ago. Um, and they wouldn't take a live. We, we fished with liveys and we used to fish on the sound and we couldn't get a bite. And then we just dropped down Billy's with a snapper and then we caught a big jury and, and it was all on. Um, but normally the case is uh, live bait. So get back to the seaway. So in the seaway, we've got our herring, we've got our little four hour hooks, we've got our rig set up. I run about a five ball sinker, which I don't know if I've got here. The big ones up here. So five balls about that size. I'll just pass that around. That's about the size I like to use. And seaway, if I'm fishing like that last hour, the run out tide, or I'm fishing at night time in the high tide. I don't like to use that size offshore because I'm going to catch this Mac tuna. Okay? I don't want to catch Mac tuna. Um, so, so what's the disadvantage of having a heavier sinker? Uh, none at all really, but when you're using a little bait fish, it tends to pull them down a bit and they, they work harder and they'll die quicker. So try and match the hatch, the sort of thing. Yeah, it's visually, I think it makes any difference for the, for the fish to see the bigger sinker on its head. It's more the bait fish is going to get more damaged. Hurt. And, and when you fish in the sea, it's so snaggy, you've got more chance of hooking at the bottom. Yeah, so. so. So you're running that sinker right on the middle of the... 100% mate. So the sinker's sitting right here. That's my sinker right there. Above that hook, that's how I look there. So right there. Yeah. Again, you guys will all notice if you use the, the rig with the 1.5 metres a litre or a metre of litre, it does work, but you'll get forever um, wrapped up around the rig, right? Have you had that problem before? Yeah. Probably would have. Um, this eliminates that 100%. Okay. Um, the other thing too is when you're fishing in the seaways, I'm talking about the seaway now, um, when you run that long rig, you tend to get a lot more snags because the sinker's dragging there and the bait's dragging there and they tend to get fouled up a bit. When I'm running the sinker right on the hook, I'm fishing dead set vertical and I try and watch my sand all the time. I'm watching the depth and I'm adjusting my sinker to suit. And it's drifting. right there. Drif drifting, drifting, yeah. I'll sometimes use electric too if there's not too much current or if it's a bit windy and I want to hold my spot. Yeah, but generally I'm drifting. Yeah. So that applies to herring right through to say a, a, a massive pike or something like that or a um, tail on that's 35 centimetres it's a bit legal <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, hope you guys are all doing that <laughs> yeah. so um, drifting in the seaway, you? yeah so when you're drifting in the seaway Greg you're running your lines straight down don't ever cast it out just drop it straight down maybe back up on it a little bit um, if you're using the electric you may maybe just flick it up a little bit so it lands next to the boat, so the thing's like down to the bottom. Um, but I do find with do fish, you tend to get more if you are moving through the school. They'll follow it and they'll follow it, and when they're out of their school, where it's just doing round circles, um, they'll hit it because they, get their, they feel a bit lost, you know, they've got, I've got to go out now, you know. So I think you get more bites. Where if you sit there amongst them, you're going to get that, the super one to bite, maybe, or whatever it might be. Yeah, there is always a bite time and they all go crazy for, for biting, but um, but if you m are moving, I think you get better fish, more fish. Yeah, and sometimes the school moves around too. Yeah. So, sorry, you're fishing for bait hard on the bottom? Yeah, I am, mate, directly on the bottom. So, whether it be in the, in the seaway or, or offshore, um, I like to have my line, like it's on the bottom, I lift the rod up, it's off, you know, if the swell goes up, I'm dropping my rod tip down. Yeah. Yeah. You, you can feel bouncing, mate. Yeah, correct. Yeah, and um, I'm very quick on the throttle. If I get hooked up, I feel myself just hook up. I'll just quickly reverse it back or drive forward where it might be, just to try and pull it back out of that that little thing. Yeah, without losing my gear and my bait, because bait's hard to get sometimes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, nothing worse than dropping your baits down and you can get a bite and there's no bait there, and you've got two left or something, <laughs> which is normally the case. Um, so. Rig, what sort of gear do you use? So we've got, we've got our hook rigs all set up, right? Um, oh, just one quick thing too. When you join your lines to your leader, okay, um, try to eliminate any swivels, just 
um, do whatever it might you like to do. Um, I, I'm an Albright man because it's quick and easy. I can do it in like two seconds. I've done the Albright. And I'm back in the water again. Uh, I don't have time to sit there and do a GT nut or whatever not you want to do, you know. But if you guys want to do it, but prior to going out, I'll do it, but not when I'm fishing. I'm just a uni, I'm a um, Albright guy. So, and I never have them come undone ever. The reasons why people all knots, all bright knots fail, I think, is they don't go back down on the loop. So, do you want to have to do an all bright knot? Yep, you can watch it on YouTube or whatever. Um, but on our YouTube, but if you go back down uh, over the top, what you just did, um, it tends to lock it in better. And the second thing is when you trim it, um, don't trim the um, braid too close. Leave a tag on it because when it, you, you should always lock it in, like grab the two mains and lock it as hard as you can lock it in and it's a bit more of a hard one because that's going to be that fish and if you haven't locked it in hard and you cut your tag too short when you do that oomph, it just all falls through and that's what people do they cut their tag too too tight before they lock it so i always leave about uh, at least i don't know five to seven mil tag on my on my braid the mono i cut as close as i can because it gets caught up as a pain in the ass but the braid i leave it about seven mil um, so we've got that all nice and so rods that's about as light as I use but to fishing whether I'm fishing in um, offshore or or, um, or in the seaway um, which is 30 pound braid and it's just a little four thousand and about a sort of P2 the full rod um, I like to use that mid size because I'm always hoping that's what I'm, if I'm chasing like the moment of the little jewies in the seaway the meter max you know with the odd big one but at night time, if I'm trying to get a bigger chewy, um, I up the ante to something like it's 10 or 8,000 size, and 50 pound braid, or even the bigger bad boy, that sort of thing, which is 80 pound braid. Because mm. um, I want to get that 1.3 metre chewy to the boat. <laughs> I don't want to lose it on that, you know? You might get it, but chances are you won't. Plus you get a lot of trouble with sharks too. Sharks are probably the backside at night time. Um, so especially a big shovel nose. And uh, yeah, so use that gear. If you're fishing, say, down around um, Jumping Bin, different scenario down Jumping Bin, because you haven't got the snags, you've got a few trees there, but you don't have as many snags. So you can actually, and the, but the trouble is the current runs really hard there, it drops off, it's very quick to turn around and come back in again. You don't, the Seaways has about an hour window, uh, where it's pretty, pretty good. The Jumping Bin has about 30 minutes, I reckon, it's very quick. Uh, but the fishing set is phenomenal. Um, so same scenario, same everything that we just did. Um, the areas of fish there, how many people have fished the jumping pin area? Yeah, you get a few? Have you tried down there for jewies? No. Oh, one, two, three, good. Yeah, yeah, soft plastics, I've put quite a few down soft plastics too, but not big ones. Sorry. <laughs> um, so jumping pin area, just so you can see it. Um, this is Kalinga Bank or Swan Bay, we call it. Swan Bay comes around here. And that's the entrance into Swan Bay there. And this is the end of um, North Stratty. Yeah, around that, big point of that. And that goes up with that. And now there's that new sort of spit over here with the bay, that sort of thing. Okay, so that. And there's a, there's a big bank sort of goes across here like this with a mud edge on it. And just around this area here, where there's a boy here, um, it's it changes. So the mud disappears, and then you get sand over here with a lot of trees in this area here. Um, and the depth, and that's that's South Stratty here, guys, and that's North Stratty, right? And that's Kalinga Bank, and there's um, Duck Creek sort of around here somewhere, it goes in, and it goes that way. Does that all make sense? Okay. So the area to fish for the jewies there by far. Is you will get them along this edge here, put them on this edge here, but it's predominantly in this zone here. That's the area. Even out, I think I put them out here actually, but you're in about 40 to 50 foot of water. Okay, it's quite deep. Um, there are still trees down on, on the bottom here too, but not too bad. But if you get too close there, you'll get them, but it drops off really quick. Even this ledge here is like a sort of three and then like a 10 meter drop. It's very quick. And they are along that edge there. I think there's crews up and down along here. Um, but the tide is the problem, the tide rips. So I've got a mate of mine, he's a, he was doing guiding, I don't if he's still doing it, oh, I think he is. Um, but uh, he used to sit in here with big divers on and use his electric holding the current 
and drop down like um, like a, a big Rapala X app sort of 30 or 40 size on a downrigger and drop it down and then drop it back about 30 feet or whatever, 10 metres off the downrigger and let it just swim in the current and smashes the big twoies. Yeah, sorry, Russell, if you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> but that's how he does it there and he does really well. Um, so if you want to do you want to use hard bodies, as I said before, mate, that might be the way to do it. If yeah, you've got no, a downrigger. Oh, okay, soft plastics, yeah. Soft plastics, um, I've put them on here just casting for flatties actually. And got, got them by catch up to metre 10, maybe. Yeah, not too bad. During the day, too. Um, but that's what he does. He just works along this edge and on this edge here. Um, this, yeah, this is actually out a bit longer here, sorry. It's a bit, a bit more longer, so it's narrowing up a little bit here. But that's the area to fish there. Um, in the seaway, I'm not going to fix this up, sorry. Seaway is where most people obviously fish for jewies. Oh, that's why it's not working. Oh, there you go, it's working. Yeah. <laughs> so with the seaway, um, I like the last to run out tide and the first to run in tide. Um, I know it's um, dirty water, but they seem to like that. I like night tide and high tide like this again, if on the high tide though, a bit opposite to what I was just saying, that that's an early morning or daytime bite is, is the last to run out. But um, night time is definitely high tide. So that's the, the north wall there. And this is the south wall here. And this is the wave break over here, the north wall wave break. And the long south wall over here somewhere. Uh, green here, green here. Green on the end, and red here, and red here, and red around here, and the that boy in front of the north wall there. So um, the best area to fish for jewies, as you'll probably know, if you don't know, this is where you should be fishing. And there's a couple of spots actually. So the pipe goes across here, okay? Uh, it's definitely this area here, which is not far up from the shoreline. Maybe only about probably. 30 metres max, start about 20 metres. Does everyone fish that area? Okay, on the run out tide. Last to run out, start here, drift about here. Okay, the other area that's good, and not too bad, and, and I haven't fished there for a couple of years now, though, but around is just this area here on the last to run out tide again. It's that area. Okay. This is daytime. Um, when the tide's coming in or running out, you can sit in the middle here. There's a couple of guys that do that and they do it really well. And they'll anchor up in front of the pipe and they'll drop their lines back to here. But they're using like 16 ounce sinkers and they're anchored. If you drift the pipe, it's really hard. It's just like snag city. It's good for us, bad for you guys. Okay. Um, the other area, run out tide here, it ships out through here and high tide too. But um, this whole area here, the Jewies do sit in there and they feed on the mullet and the bait here. But you've got to be there when they come in. They're not always there, okay? But when they come in, you can smack them there and be ones too at night time. Like 10 o'clock high tide or whatever it might be. You go sort of 10 o'clock, fish the high tide. Once it starts running out, you just sort of get around. There's Eddy here, it Eddy's there. Out of the current, the current rips past here. Fish that corner there. And now you're fishing about 30 to 40 foot of water there as well. That's a really good spot. So that's probably the only spot you can sit there for fish for maybe four hours of out the current really peeing off because it's it's sort of <coughs> it's a backwash there. You get squid there too at night. If you put a lot of squid out, I wouldn't have to eat it, but <laughs> if you put a lot of squid out, um, they work really well there too. Um, so that's night time. There, this is day, preferably early morning, say low tide about eight o'clock, go out about 5.36 just on daylight, freeze whatever off, and um, and that's the area to drift there or down here. Depends on how big the swell is, but you will get the fish there in that area. And probably out to about actually about a third of the way across, not quite the middle on the run out tide. Um, I haven't caught, I oh, actually I have caught, there is a spot here. Um, the tower's here, and there's a bit of a hole. If you, 
where, where the rock wall is to be here before you walk down the end of the wall here. Um, there's, a, there's a sign here. But there's a bit of a hole out here that if you know that's about 60 foot deep or 55 foot deep, so 10 fathoms deep. It's quite deep. Um, I caught quite a good jewies in there too. Drifting uh, run out tide as well, not run in so much run out. Has anyone fished there at all? So I'm telling you, everywhere, everywhere I fish, I just, this is rubbish. This is it. So daytime, 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 run out tide. Um, nighttime, I do sometimes fish here on the last to run in, uh, but sharks are a problem, okay? Uh, but I'll probably tend to sit more around that beacon at the front of, on top of it in a wave break. Okay. Any questions on that, Dave? You got that one? Yeah, cool. Um, do you actually anchor or do you drift in as well? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I sometimes anchor there, mate. Yeah, or use the electric and hold me there. Um, you can sort of putt around inside a little bit and then come out back out a little bit more. If you have an electric, um, yeah, uh, just anchor. There's not much current there. You can, if you don't mind moving all the time, it's not all the time, probably about once every sort of 10 or 15 minutes, if you can just slow drift. It depends on your wind. If you've got wind, though, I'd definitely say anchor or use the electric. Generally facing north, so you don't want any north wind, you want a southerly wind or no wind in that scenario. But the next few nights is a really good tide free. Well, the next few nights, if I could, then no, that's going to be windy, but I'd be going ashore because that's the, that's the dewy, the dewy time. Okay, any questions on the inside there at all? No? Okay. Um, Wave break's going to be crowded tomorrow night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the problem there at night time. There are a few boats there. You can sort of sneak in, but the best thing is because you're fishing, you're not fishing your lines out a long way. So you could probably fish two boats in the size of this room, you know, if you get mates. Otherwise you throw sinkers at each other. But, um, but yeah, I'd, uh, I would say on that north area, the way break, um, on the southern side of the north wall, probably around four boats would be pretty crowded. Yeah. Okay. Um, any questions on inside and seaway at all? No, you're all good. Dave, you're all good. Yeah, cool. Um, okay, so my forte, offshore. <laughs> I like offshore fishing for jewies. Um, and um, this year they're, they're phenomenal. They've been really good daytime and nighttime. Uh, probably the most, from our customers, the most fish I've ever heard of during the day this year. Like, Definitely not a bit a jewy closure because there's too many jewies, there's lots. Um, has anyone here got jewies during the day off, off the, off the um, seaway yet? Outside the seaway? No? How, many, how about night time? I've got them in the day. Yeah. Pin. Off the pin, yeah. Once. Pins, yeah, pins good too. Once, Once. okay, yeah, okay. No, they, they're quite often up yeah, there no, too. No, we were going off. Okay, on the wreck there, mate, or out further? I'm not 100% sure. We're about, uh, no, we're pretty bottom. We're about. 24,000, so oh, yeah. 50 metres? Yeah. Yeah. And they just happened to come in there and yeah, one after the other. Sorry, just checking. Could have been around the Sully's actually. Mm. I think I only went as far as just south. Oh no, there's 41. 2741. Actually, it's only first page, middle bottom. Sorry, mate. <laughs> Uh, but that's the area. 2741, 153, 33. So you get Dewey's there during the day, as the gentleman was saying. You get hits of live bait there as well. Um, and that's a fair run north from here. As the seaway's 2756, so it's just around about nearly 30 k's from the seaway. Which one is it? The first page on the bottom and the middle. 2741. These are in no order. I do it all the time to confuse everyone. Um, but yeah, 2741. And on the second page, 2747 is just south of Seaway. Um, that's sort of at the bottom of the cotton reef, does that make sense? It's called cotton reef, actually. So second page, it says cotton reef. Um, that's a good spot too. So all these positions I've caught you at, guys. Um, but we'll go through the marks a bit later. Just, I'll just go through the fishing first. So, um, okay, so... If you're going to go out uh, morning, so how many guys here don't like fishing at night time out offshore? Or how many guys have not done it and maybe want to try it? Yeah. Okay, that's more the case. Okay, so you need to understand the, the weather. It's really important. I keep emphasising the weather all the time. 
uh, but it's for your safety. So this time of the year, you might have saw the other day the, the spike last weekend, the swell, did you see from Saturday to Sunday, how quick it come up? And if you looked at your charts, it went from half a metre to two and a half, three metres in about two hours. So if you went out fishing, there's, no, there's nothing on the sea where it's flat as, if you had looked on the computer and all knew it was coming, then went out there and then the tide started running out and you come back in, it's just cracking right, pretty well right across. So you've got to be real, and it's night time, so you can't see what's really happening. You can feel what's happening when you start going sideways. But um, it's really scary. So you need to understand what the, what the weather's going to do, what the swell's going to do. Some of the year we get really big lows down south, okay? And the lows push a really big southerly swell up. It might take two or three days to get to us, but when it gets to us, it's big. So um, did anyone get out this week at all, offshore? Sweet, the one gentleman here did. Oh, oh, Monday. Monday, yeah. So Monday, when you got out past 100 metres, the swell was monstrous. Like, it was only a half a metre in the seaway. It was 0.4, I think, like nothing. But out there, it was, um, it was about two and a half to maybe three metres on the sets, I guess. A lot of current bushes that's really standing up in a real close period. Um, but had it, that swell had a bit more east in it, we would have felt it in on the seaway. So you need to know what the swell direction is. If it's direct southerly, you, you are protected a bit in the seaway. Jumping pin, you're not though. Jumping pin, the swell southerly starts to kick in up around the pin bar area, so it gets a bit, a bit bigger. So if it's half a metre down here, it's probably metre to metre and a half if there's a three metre wide swell coming in up there, so a metre and a half. If you're chasing the tail in the surf at the moment with your boat, uh, from the surf going into the gutters with your boat because there's not much swell the further north you go out straight the more bigger the swell's going to get at the moment okay because that's subtly swell um but getting back to what i was saying with the jewies um you need to know the swell you need to know the wind so if your boat's only four and a half meters and the wind's going to come up 20 knots from the west and you're out maybe on the 24s it's going to come up a bit ugly so you need to know the wind's not going to come up because quite often west it comes up pretty hard at night time so understand that too um, and this tides, try and get the tide that's, uh, even though there's not much swell, try and get the tide that's sort of high at eight or nine at night. So you're going out and running out, on the running, sorry, and you come back in the running. Because normally with Jewies, um, I'm not emphasizing here, but you'd have your bag limit pretty well um, by 6.30. So you don't need to be out there till 10 o'clock at night. You just want to catch track or something. So um, it's only two per person, so if you want to keep a few, Unless you want to catch them and just throw them back, that's up to you guys. Um, you can stay there a bit longer. But, um, yes, sorry? Practice. Practice, yeah. <laughs> so, just understand the weather. Um, okay, when you, at night time, if you're offshore, there's a couple of things that you can contend with. One's whales. So, whales are pretty friendly at night time. Um, my son, Jack, the, not Liam, but Jack, uh, him and I were there a couple of years ago, drew fish, fishing at night. There was a glass out, there's only about a metre swell with that. It was really nice, and um, the jewies were really on the bite. As soon as it gets dark, they really kick in. And um, these, we had whales around, so we could hear them, shh, it was, well, they were everywhere. Um, and then um, before the moon rose, which was probably around about 7 o'clock or 6.30, but at about quarter to 6, 6 o'clock, um, the fish would come straight on once the moon or the sun went down. And we had maybe a couple on the boat, and, um, and then we hear them getting closer and closer, then we hear the splashing. And then we got wet, so I jumped right near the boat and we crapped ourselves and we didn't have the electric on luckily. We didn't have any on, we are just drifting because there's no wind. And we'd done a high tail south um, and trying to look for whales as we're driving. Uh, and then we sat for about an hour, half hour, and I said, Jack, they're on the boat, we've got to go back to the jewels, we've gone by now. I mean, the whales will be gone by the take off. So we went back there, they were straight on the jewels, they straight back on again, and the whales were straight on again too. And they crashed next to us again, so um, we just got another Jew in the deck. I think we had four or something. And um, I was actually pulling the Jew up when we got wet again. And we crapped ourselves again. And um, I threw the Jew on the, took the hooks out, put it on top of the casting platform at the front, and just hammered the motor because we were scared. <laughs> and um, anyhow, we lost it somewhere between home and, and there, the Jew fell out of the back of the water. Oh, yeah. Jack goes, there's only three fish here, Dad. Like, we've got four. He goes, no, there's three. <laughs> so, lucky, lucky Jew. But you've got to be careful of whales. And you've got to be careful driving at night time too. Really careful. So someone needs to be able to have good vision um, on the whales at night time. Because a lot of boats hit whales, as we know. And whales hit boats too. 
So it's not a thing that we meant we try to do, but it just happens. So uh, my suggestion is if you're driving at night, particularly if you're driving, say, back ends easier, you can use the light, any light that's on the horizon, whether it be a, a street light or a light and see or whatever, but focus on that light and pinpoint it and try not to take a direction off it. And if you see the light disappear, there's a whale jumping very close to you. And then pull back the throttle. Serious. <laughs> so many times we've been going out like really early in the morning, four o'clock in the morning, heading to the 50s back in the day, and um, only a couple of years ago. And um, yeah, just driving on the next minute, it, it just goes black in front of me. So I always focus on a trawl if I'm heading east, I try and wind up a trawl or something. And hopefully it's in the direction I'm sort of heading. And I watch the light always. So obviously it's going to just be a bit swell now and then. Um, but I focus on it and then it just goes, disappears. I know there's a whale like right in front of us or whatever. Sometimes we've had to do full locks and whatever because um, it jumped out of the water in front of us. So that's a little key point to keep in mind. You, <laughs> you, you can't really use spotties at night time, I'm sure. It's too, it actually does things to your mind because it's, uh, it's quite hard to focus on things that are moving, swell and whatever. So you better concentrate on what light you have. Um, so don't use the spotty offshore. Um, the other thing too, when you're driving a boat at night time, learn to feel the wave. You feel the wave, you can't see the wave so much because there's not much light. So you need to feel the boat, you need to feel when you're going down the swell, and when you're coming up the swell, when to pull back and whatever it might be, especially with a bit of wind. So you learn, you learn to feel the wave. So you trim your boat right too, really important. Um, so make sure you've got, if you've got a little tinny, make sure you've got two got big heavy guys at the front of the boat because you might broach on some of those waves a little bit. So balance your boat out right, keep the nose up a bit, be careful. And it's enough safety aspect. So night time, yeah. give it a go. Um, you need to give it a go, but you need to also uh, understand that, that what can happen. Uh, so, okay, so night time. Um, I may take the light right out to catch bait, but I probably won't use it, okay? I want to get my fish up and they're big. Um, at night time, I don't think we've got quite under about a metre, metre 10 maybe, a bit the smallest, maybe. Um, a metre 28, 15 to 25 is probably average, and the odd metre 30 or 35, which is get up to over 20 kilo. Um, I tend to use the bigger ones. Where we're fishing, where we're fishing, there's a lot of structure, and uh, the, the fish will brick you. They're really powerful, the chewy. So the bite is normally, uh, and Liam will this, he's quite a lot of chew. So the bite, you hold your bait, you're watching, your, um, well, you, it's hard to watch, and, it's it, nighttime plays a lot of tricks on your heads out there at night time. You get, you'll be focusing, focusing, and it might be blowing 10 knots, and then all of a sudden there'll be a little bit of white cap, a curl will happen. It scares the crap out of you because you think it's something coming up out of water at you. So you're focusing so much on your rod, you know, so you just get used to it. Um, but um, I'm holding my line most of the time with my fingers here like this, and my rod tip, as I said, as a, as a swell goes up, I'll drop my rod tip down. And as the swell, as the boat goes, sorry, as the boat goes up, I drop my rod tip down. As the boat goes down, I lift the bow up a bit. So the line's just in contact with the bottom, okay? And it goes loose, so I just lift the rod up a little bit higher. And um, and the, if you're there, and the bite will just be like, dum, dum. You'll feel a bit of the, the bait going like that at first, and then it'll be dum, dum. And then the third one's always the bang. And when he goes bang, you go bang at the same time. Don't give it any line, don't let him run, don't do anything. And my drag set, it is set quite tight, okay? You want to set those hooks in and make sure it doesn't fall out. And you don't want him to go around a rock or through a pipe or whatever's down the bottom there, you know? You need to um, hold him out. The first part will be quite powerful and they'll be quite pulling, but Jewies um, give in quite easy. On this sort of year they do. <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and, uh, and then I'll do a couple of runs around. Um, and they'll come up and lay on their sides. Um, doing a gaff shot's really important. I went with my friend the other day, and I think, Wayne, I think your gaff was so blunt, I think it was flat on the end. I think I had six shots at trying to get this shoe this way, that way, that way. Anyway, trying to get the hook in, I couldn't get it in, but we actually got it in. Um, but they're on their side, and rarely do they kick them off and go back down. They, once they're done, they're done, okay? So um, I don't give them any drag. I give them drag, but I don't give them much drag. And the, the heavier one, I'm pushing even heavier again, so this fellow here. Um, if there's just, say, one guy in the boat or two guys in the boat, I definitely fish a third rod out of the rod holder or four, two rods out of the rod holder. 
with a live yarn because it's straight down, it's not in your way, and you can uh, board the fish at the back of the boat with a couple of bit higher up with the, with the bait set on it. And as I said, it's sort of on the bottom, off the bottom sort of thing. Okay. Um, if you're daytime fishing, sometimes I'll put it like that. That was actually that was over right there. I was using one of those because my mates can get them up the up the blocks on those, um, but I had no luck on it. But uh, it's sitting in the rod holder. Okay, so we've checked the weather. We're going to go out. Our rigs are going to be probably seven O's and eight O's, and I even keep a couple of ten O's rigged up. So I make my rigs up everything early. Uh, my lines, as I said, I can tie an all bright in seconds. So. Um, my, I had the option of whatever size bait I'm using, rigs or pre-made. It's quicker to tie an Albright than to tie two snell hooks. So have your rigs pre-made, just cut, cut your lead, your, your braid, tie on another rig. It's Why quicker. Uh, because swivels for two reasons. One is um, your leader needs to be probably about two metres long. I mean, it was two metres probably. Um, and if you do make it that long and your sink is, I use the sink on, right on top of the head like I was saying, um, the swivel's there and the fish is out there. So you then have to put the rod down and sort of manhandle the fish in the gaff it. Um, I can wind the fish right up to there and gaff it sort of thing when it's, when it's a all bright or, or some sort of knot. Um, second reason is uh, um, probably because it's some another knot that can go wrong. Yeah, <laughs> less paraphernalia but yeah. Um, so, Rigged up, ready to roll. I've got the all that there. I'm gonna get my bait first. So, it's ba getting baits is as hard as getting the fish. Probably harder, yeah. as you probably all know. It's really hard. There is an art to getting bait. Um, having the correct bait cheeks is probably one of the things. Um, I'll just pass these around. Can I pass those other things around before. Yeah. Yeah. So the first one I use here. That's just like a common rainbow type bait cheek. They work really well. Um, it's a size eight. Size eight really good on sort of small yakkers to small slimies. Um, but for jewies, uh, they will take little baits, but they like bigger baits. They like a bit bigger, okay? So if you can get like the yakas of the bigger size, quite solid or a slimy or a 35, 70 tailor, um, they work really well. And to get those, I use a bit bigger bait jig. I'll use something like these fellows here, okay? These are really, really good. Um, and uh, these are only four hook bait jig, but four is enough to get at one time, especially slimies that get tangled up. Uh, and a bit heavier leader as well. Uh, they work really well. And if I want to catch pike, that seems to be the best one I like on pike. There's a lot of pike out there at the moment, but heaps of little tiny ones at the moment. But that one seems to get the pike going. Just pass it. It's a bit wet, guys. They've got that stuff on it before. There's skin algae, be careful. Um, so, when you're using the bait, has anyone used one of these type of rods before? Yep. So, do you like those? Yeah. They're, they're just good if you've got a half cab boat or you've got a rod lock in your boat because you can actually um, pull the bait jig back up through the stem of the rod and just the sinker hangs out the butt here, at the top here. Okay, so it's, it doesn't hook up at all. So I've got, uh, you all know they're a pain in the backside, the bait jigs. I've got to get it too long for it and can't get it all the way back in. Uh, which is too long, Greg, sorry? The, the bait jigs. Oh, you should, I'll put it on and show you. I should be able to get it through. Liam got dropped in it. You're a lucky day. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I think some Greg maybe some brands perhaps. Yeah. Get Liam's thread to stick the center while I'm talking to you guys. Yeah, that's an art. Yeah. So the secret is to use either wire, single yeah. strand wire, or. or 80 pound mono or something like that. Get, I couldn't even get the 80 or 100 pound mono for a while. It's true. Wire, yeah. Oops. On Monday, Liam's I was got out, good vision. Yeah. I, I was catching the bait. The next thing I swung around just to reorganise myself. And, and it snapped off. off. The swivel rusted through. Oh, true. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I it off and then I had to try and get the line. And I didn't realise, so I wound back in. Oh, shit. Pulled it back through the rod. Oh, you're nice. But, uh, you can back and... <laughs> yeah, it's something you want to do at home before you go out. Yeah, when another half hour. Yeah, that one I do use a swivel on mate, so it doesn't go past. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. past the iron, yeah. Um, so, the sinkers I use on bait jigs, um, a lot of guys use too small a sinker, like a little five ball or a four ball sinker. You want to use big. 
That's one secret to catching bait is big sinkers. So uh, four ounces would be the smallest I'd use and eight would be the biggest I'd use. Okay. Um, you want to be able to, I keep saying this too as well, but imagine this is the bait jig. Actually, I should take those hooks off because it's um, going to get caught in the carpet. But, um, but actually, well, I'm just going to change this. Sorry, guys. I know they get caught in the carpet. That's, that, that one, that's, the, yeah. one that's, that's the one that broke off? And it's, yeah, yeah okay. that must be long before I didn't say a faulty one, but I might have done it on purpose. <laughs> <I'm just joking. laughs> no, I don't know why that happens. Sorry, mate. Sorry, no, it should come in, though. How you going there, Liam? <laughs> <laughs> so I think... Set, yeah, yeah. <laughs> set, single strand wires are best. Single strand wires by far the best. You put a little loop on the end and, pull, and actually tie your line to the little loop and then pull it through. And the ones, years ago, the, um, the Daiwa ones used to do interline fishing rod, not bait jig rod, and they had the, the, the wire system with it to the rod when you buy it. Okay, so um, if I'm bait jigging and let's say um, the bait is on the sander, uh, it's the bottom, and the bait say here, really massed up here, and a little bit on the bottom here, maybe a bit over here, but predominantly it's, it's there, um, and say I'm fishing, uh, say that's um, 30 metres deep, that's 20, and that's 10. So the bait fish is around 15 to 25 metres. So I always use colour line, it's always coloured, and I just like to have it colour, it's easier for me to, to look, work it out. So I'll drop it down really quick to 15 metres, so I'll let one and a half colours go out. And then when I get to that sort of Last one and a half colours gone out, then as it's going down, it's looked up a bit higher. Oh, my rod's a bit noisy. But I'll, as it's going out, I grab it and I let it go. Does that make sense? Grab it, let it go. As it's going through. You need weight to make it do that though. If you get too small a sinker, it doesn't do anything. It just sort of flutters down. But when it's aggressive like that through the water, it, they'll just load up. So as you're going down, um, as you're going down, you'll feel it, um, it's going quite quick, quite quick, and then all of a sudden it'll stop. You've got bait on straight away. Straight away lift your rod tip up and just slowly wind it back up. If you wind fast, they, they may um, fall off, but if you let it sit a bit longer, you try to get an extra one on, especially the slimies, they'll just come up as a big bunch, which is painful. So um, you just try try the bigger sinker and hold through your fingers as it's going down. So if you're using an overhead, you just sort of put your thumb on the spool, thumb on the spool, thumb on the spool, thumb on the spool, let it go down. Just gonna see. I'll, I'll get that bait jig back off you, Greg, and see if it goes down there, mate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's floating around there. Yeah. Oh, the one I've got at home. Um. Any questions on that at all? So I'm focusing on zip, 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 zip through here. But by the time we get to about here, it's only it's only filled up. Um, if I do get down the bottom and I get nothing on there. A couple of things I'll do. Has anyone put S Factor on their little skins at all and tried that? Yeah. Work, mate? Very good. So if you've got S Factor on your boat or any sort of uh, Pro Cure or any scent, scent the little feathers, okay? And, uh, and it definitely works and they'll just jump on it. Uh, if they're still really quiet and not biting on it, squid's really good. Little strips of squid. Uh, Pilchers not too bad, but they do pull it off pretty easy. Uh, but little strips of squid, just cut about half the size of a matchstick. Does that make sense? And put it on maybe second hook, whatever, and just drop it down slowly, zip, zipping it through, and they'll, they should bite on that. And the squid, you can go back down again as well. Um, it's probably better to turn the bait. You back up, and the bait moves around. It's always, it's never where you saw it two minutes earlier. Next drift, you go back there, it's not there. It's, you've got to follow the bait and chase the bait. You okay. don't want to go out tad early. Hundred percent, mate. Yeah, that's right. So, um, if if I'm fishing in the afternoon and at that hot bite time, at this time is no doubt about twenty past five till uh, from twenty past five to five thirty, they just really come on. They'll be sitting there, you get nothing to live baits. 
Rod's all sitting there. And as soon as that sun goes down behind the tambourine, right? just bamboo, they just rod, boom, 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 you're on, you know? It's weird. Um, but uh, I'll get my bait probably around, I'll try and, oh. the other day we went out um, with my mate Wayne, and uh, we got there, we got through the seaway at 20 bus five, it was actually dark. <laughs> we thought, oh, my crap, we went like flat channel like getting there because I got stuck at work here trying to get out. And um, anyhow, we got there and we managed to get one yakka. And we put the yakka down and I got totally smoked and lost my rig and got me on the bottom on that big rod. And, um, and then we got a whiting. Uh, on a, a troll whiting, or a troll whiting, we call them, offshore whiting, about that big. And I said, that'll do. And we dropped it down, we got one about 14 kilos, or 12 kilos, something like that. Straight up, see at the bottom, it's like, straight on, boom, boom, bang, on. And then um, we spent another hour, we got a little, little tiny yak about this big. <laughs> we dropped that down, and uh, it was probably there for about 10 minutes, nothing happened, because I don't like little ones so much, I want bigger ones. Um, and then I just grabbed the rod, the rod hole, and I saw some fish on the sounder up a bit higher. So I just wound it up about a colour. And then um, put the rod hole, and so, so I walked away, it just went right, buckled over that. I thought, like, crap. So I tried to get it out, I tried to get it out. As, for some reason, it did actually come off the hooks. I don't know, I'm not very rare, but it did. And then we spent another hour trying to get live bait and gave up. Live bait. So three live baits, one fish. Um, I had some live baits at home. I'm lucky to live on the canal. I had um, some liveys in my pen, which we should have taken that afternoon, but I didn't. And my mate picked me up from the jetty and we chucked in a dozen liveys I had in the pen. And we got out there about 5.30, so it's still dark. And um, as soon as we get there, they were straight on the liveys, because you can't get liveys in the dark, it's really hard. Yeah. So we're lucky to get, uh, we got four juries the next morning, consecutive morning straight after. Um, yeah. So where so, are you generally going to get the bait from? At the spot. So a lot of people will go straight to the bait reef and try and get bait. Um, the bait reef at 12 fathoms off the seaway, and for those of you who have fished here for a long time, the bait always used to be heaps there, but I think the, the long lines give it a bit of a hide in these days with their per se netting at night. Yeah, every night they're out there getting it yeah. and, and raping it. And yeah, that's they why they use a per se lights. net so that these yeah. lights, they get the fish to come up and they get a smaller boat and they run the net around and the, and the bottom falls up. And they get a feather off the current here on those on Monday night. Oh, were they really? Oh, that's not good. Over the, uh, over the blocks. Over Stratic. Oh, that's not good. Over, at the, yeah, at the blocks. Oh, were they really? Yeah, oh, Saturday God. night and uh, Monday night. Oh, that's why. Okay. Yeah, yeah, right. It's good trouble getting bait there. I'll win it again on um, Sunday morning. Yeah, we tried Saturday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Got, got nothing. So yeah, okay. yeah, right, yeah. So that swell was Friday night, the Saturday last week. Sorry about that, folks. The Sunday was good. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, okay, yeah, right. Yeah, because they've raped it at the front end and they've obviously pushed it that way further, which is yeah. unfortunate. Um, they, they stopped them up at um, Sunshine Coast. They eliminated them from getting baiting clothes because uh, they've, they've wrecked the marlin fishery. There's no bait there. They've been there every night. They're there every night. They're for the last yeah. 10 years there, yeah. yeah. So for the, when you see those big bright lights out offshore at night times they're doing, yeah. and they usually go at about seven o'clock or whatever, and they come back in about four in the morning before you all go out. So yeah. you don't sort of get to see much. Yeah. Oh, they they load up. They need to get they got bait tanks like half the size. It's bloody roomy. So and then they go out long lining and and um, they they have some hooks there from lobbies. and they're out there for a few days. So they drop a lot of bait out. Yeah, it's unfortunate I'd like to see it stop, but anyhow. Um, <laughs> so, so back to where you go. Yeah. So okay, so um, so normally I get it at the grounds, um, but I do not go go to the, the closed boat reset at the front because they've been hammered from those guys. Yeah, they get hammered a bit from us too, but we only take ten fish or something. Yeah. So it's irrelative to what they're doing. They're taking ten tons. So out. Yeah. Well, yeah, you better go under 18s actually to get it because okay. they can't they can't get the fish to come up that high in that depth. That's yeah. why they don't per se in the, out the deeper water. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What if there's marlin stuck in the canal? Yeah, the mate, it, it doesn't work it's offshore good. as good, mate. It's yeah. it's I don't know what it is. It's weird, and but yackles will work inside, mm -hmm. but mullet doesn't work very good outside. Yeah, strange, eh? Pike's good though. Pike will work. Pike's probably only inshore fish that'll work offshore. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. I have tried mullet, but yeah, it's not much. 
members of Queen that that our film, all our famous spots that we always get by call once, yeah. once the pros start. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They Inside the bay. Yeah, yeah. Within, and they mm. do every, they do the high tide every yeah. night. Mm. And they just clean out all the things. And, yeah. and daytime. I just wish, I'm sorry about that, I was using a pro fisherman there, but <laughs> I just wish they'd see the the potential the Gold Coast has, which always, always has for families to come fishing, if they could just stop netting and allow that bigger thing to happen, you know? Buy them out, pay them out, give them all the money, whatever. Um, but yeah, it's just uh, it's a strange thing. They stopped it up north and in Palmerstone Passage, they stopped it in New South Wales. But the only way to do it in Queensland, I think, is if they need to introduce a licence, unfortunately, that would pay them to buy back the licences. Because the government won't spend the money. Simple as that. Mm. So do you troll for your pole? Uh, I do if I'm fishing the seaway. Yeah. Yep. And the back away break. Or, or I cast off plastics or little lures around. Okay. Yep. But I'll sure you get them on bait jigs. Yeah. Pike is one of the only things I've caught on bait jigs at night, and they're good live at the too. Mm -hmm. <coughs> But they're really they're only at certain areas. They're on deeper reefs, like 18 fathoms. They're not much on the 12 fathom reefs. Little ones are, but not the big ones. What about Gari? Have you ever tried the Gari? Yeah. Um, really... No, I haven't. Not live. Because Gari hard to keep alive in yeah. a bait tank for a start. I get a few um, from like now. Like oh I get yeah. Carrara, I get yeah. Fairly like big Garis. Yeah. Quite easily. Mate, if you can keep them alive, definitely try it. Mm. Like when they're hungry, which they are at the moment. So May, June, July, August, early September is like our due time. So we're right in the middle of it right now. And obviously you've got snapper closure and pearly, so it's in due time. Are you sure you've been that in Yeah. He's done it four times, this John. He's got 10 metres of hair milk But definitely um, um, focus on uh, what you can get offshore, mate. But if you've got uh, access to other baits, take it with you, yeah. yeah. Any live bait's better than that live bait. I remember one, one year, a couple of years ago, a few years ago, um, with Jack, we got um, a lot of juice that night too, and um, we couldn't get live, but it was really hard. I think we're a bit late again. And uh, we got a, a, a like called red mullet or uh, goatfish, mm. and we actually got two like 40 pound jewies off the one goatfish. It slid up the line out of his mouth, it come up the line, the line, the hook went through, and it was half mauled and still kicking a little bit. And I quickly put it straight back down again. Another one. Poor red too, but it's all poor. What about the little finale? Ah, uh, they work too. Yeah. Yep, yep. Anything, anything like that. Okay. Yep. Well, yep. Yeah. So do that. Tar wine's good too. Tar wine will work. Brim doesn't. Yeah. If you're trolling for pike, what are you using? Okay. So I'm using like um, if you troll for flatties, you know which lures work for pike. <laughs> um, if you do flatty fishing, but um, generally think around 60 mil. Uh, gets down about a metre and a half max. And you want to be able to top of weed beds that are no deep and about two metres. Like a little hard bodies or something? Hard bodies, Greg, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Really slow trolling, mate, and just whack your line every now and then, just like you do for flatties, and the pike will jump on there. Um, they tend to like more uh, natural colours, like sort of chromes with a brown back or a black back or something like that. They also do like... Um, uh, the other colour I do, like in fluoro type, is uh, what's called lemon squash, but it's like green on the top, silver sides, and orange belly. That, uh, like a, like a uh, chartreuse green on top. So, yeah, that's really good too. But natural colours are better. Yeah. So, pike's probably your number one uh, inshore bait, and it's probably about number three offshore, or f actually four. But in offshore, if you had the access to it, 35 centimetre tailor, number one. Uh, Slimies would be number two, Yakas number three, and then everything comes after that. Okay. Um, okay, so getting back to the bait, we've got our bait now, so we're going to go out. What are we going to look for? So, dew will be always around the bait, and you'll just see them either up top here, like so, on your sounder, and you might see some school over here with a bit of bait around as well. Um, but that's how they normally are. If you see the bait with a bit of a gap in it like that, you may see one in, in amongst the bait, if you've got a good sounder. Um, but they'll be sitting above it normally. Um, if the bait is really high, I've never seen them up more than about halfway, but um, I don't know if you guys have caught, caught them in shelf, like mid what I haven't. Um, but generally, they like that bait that's sort of down here, and they're down here with it. Down a bit lower. 
If the plates are up there on top of the, if the duty are on top of the base fish like that, why do you fish right on the bottom? Yeah, they'll go there. It's a good question. Um, as I said the other day, I saw them like that, and I I will always put a bait out correct. If I've got two rods sitting, I will often wind mine about them. Or whatever I look on the sound, maybe five or ten meters up, and have it sitting there. But rarely do I get a bite on it. The other ones are going all the time on the bottom. I think 100% they swim down. They see the fish on the bottom pin there, and it's an easy target. But when it's up here, it's amongst everything. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's easier for them to see it. Maybe when they come down to it and go and pick him off the bottom. I think that's how my thing out works. Um, if, if you are drifting at night time, I would, like if your line's out fairly, uh, like more than say 45 degrees, if you're like any sapper fishing, uh, behind the boat or 30 degrees behind the boat, uh, I definitely put a bigger sinker on. You need to keep it very close to the back of the boat. Or you back up a bit. Do you drift or do you normally um, do you drift Yeah, so if they're just stacked on there, there's nothing at either side, um, I'll try and hold myself there, I may anchor, I may anchor but I've got my electric on me. Um, Liam and I share the one electric, so it <laughs> depends if he's fishing or I'm fishing um, at the time. Um, but uh, if, if there's no wind, I'll always drift and I'll back up a little bit every now and then just to keep myself on the bait. Um, if there's a lot of wind I'll, and I'm electric, I definitely would anchor 100%. Um, it's only 20 minutes deep, 25 minutes deep most of the time, so it's not too hard to pull it back up and move again. Um, but I, as I said earlier to a couple of other guys, quite often there'll be someone sitting on that spot and I can't get on the spot. Um, and what I'll do is, I politely and amicably as I can, <laughs> drift very close to them, <laughs> pass them. Uh, so if this is the plotter, and and my spot's here, and he's right here fishing on it. Um, and I know there's a little bit maybe over here. I'll probably drift if the wind's blowing, say, from the southeast. I'll, I'll go down this side of him and hopefully pluck one off next to him, but if I can't, <laughs> uh, I believe that these guys here, these Jewies, will actually swim away with the bait sometimes, and quite often. A couple hundred metres from where that guy is, I'll, I'll get a hit. But like, just like I was saying before, they're outside their safe zone, they'll go maybe that far. Maybe the water's a big shark up their ass or something. Um, so they'll only go to there, but quite often you'll get a hit out there, or sometimes there may be a little bit of more bait scattered out here, and they'll, you know, they'll, they'll be there feeding it as well as there. Um, with the jewies, they talk. I don't know if you all know jewies talk, they grunt, 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 talk, and they really do talk to their mates down the bottom. So if old mate got his lip half pulled off and he dropped him, <laughs> he's gonna go down there and say, get away from this, don't touch it, it's a setup. <laughs> and, uh, and, and it happens, it really does happen. And the other morning we did exactly that. We got two fish straight away. Um, then we dropped one and I said, they're gonna go off the bite. And then we got another one. And then we dropped that one before I got up. Um, and uh, so yeah. we had to move and we had another position. So hundred metres away over there, so we went over there, and um, we got two more straight up again, straight away, and then we dropped two again, and then we never got another fish again. So then, by that time, it was about eight o'clock in the morning. We, it was they gone off, um, but uh, yeah. So you try not to drop your fish. That's what I'm saying. Before you got to set those hooks in, you got to get that fish up. And I believe if you leave it too long on the surface and they're laying there. That's when they go grunt, 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 grunt. I think they're telling the old mate down the bottom there, <laughs> warning him, <laughs> this is my last chance overseas. Get away from me. Uh, so get him out of the water as quick as you can. Okay. And that's the same in, in shore too, estuary, everything. With Julius. So he's do talk. The magic show. He's been about 40 <laughs> <laughs> How do you go? Are you going to give up, mate? Lee, do do us a favour, mate. Yeah, go, uh, no. Go downstairs and just grab some um, size six single strand or size eight, six or eight single strand wire. Yeah. Is that for me, please, mate? Yeah. Let's, let's see how much Liam pulls out. Who's got bets on it? Yeah. <laughs> Nearly two metres. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's empty. <laughs> Dave, you're spot on, I think. You win. <laughs> Oh, well, this is like a magic trick.
No, I see. No, I don't know. So size six single strand. So I'm getting meaning to get this wire and you'll see what I mean. Wires to go. There is, a, there is another way too. Everyone's going to wire a good though. There is another way too, is, um, which I've done before, is I get a little, um, I use a real light braid and I tie my line to the braid and to a, like a size zero or, or a double zero ball sinker and just drop it down the centre here. Because this all come apart, every brand comes apart. There's a hole there and you drop the ball sinker with the light braid and it just goes straight to the bottom. And that works too, but you need to throw up through that part with a bit of line first, like you just did, through here out to here, and then um, with your line attached to it, then pull the other heavy line out, and that's obviously your braid, and then just uh, tie a sinker to it and drop it down through there. But the wire, which he's about to get, works the best. Yeah, back to that one. Yeah, so um, if you can back to what the gentleman said before, you ain't cut them off. Um, it does. Quite often this time of the year, and you'll be with you guys of more contention when we're out there at night time now, because probably you guys will be on those marks, and they're all the marks of fish. Um, if you're there, give it, give it a go, you should catch fish, but if there's someone else there, there's plenty of other marks on there. A lot of these marks, there's probably four or five marks within about 2K, so you don't need to go far to go to the next mark. Like I said before, the other day we just moved on a bit and got more fish. Um, my honey hole at the front here by far, like a lot of guys fish out in the 12 fathom or 18 fathom reef out, reef out the front, um, particularly 17, 18 fathoms, which is where we get on the snapper at the moment as well. Um, and I think if those of you who come to our snapper seminar, it's the same mark, you get the jewies there too. You will get jewies there in the morning as well, um, but you definitely get them there at night time better. Um, but I 100% would much rather go to the blocks. If those of you who are watching this probably hate me for saying that, but it is the best juice spot on the Gold Coast by far. And there's about 20 of them up there, so there's 20 spots to move around. This is off straight. Yeah. yeah. So it's about 5 to 7 k's north of the seaway. Um, it's only your model tinny, only 4 point meter tinny, takes me about 10 minutes, 12 minutes to get there on a good day. Um, fast if I've got whales on my backside. And it's um, on here. Uh, Seven fifty-two. It is. Oh, there it is. Okay, top one where it says snapper. That's actually you do, ca you do catch snapper there too, by the way, guys. Quite lonely, but not now. You don't want to do that. <laughs> you can see it's twenty-six point five meters deep. So the middle one, twenty-seven fifty-two. Um, the next row, the right side, number two spot, monster jewies. Monster jewy. We're talking like over a meter thirty, so meter thirty-five or thirty-eight. Check out one copy. He's got a meter forty, wasn't it? That was about 20 something kilo, 27 kilo, 26 kilo. We lose big ones there, right? Big mother jewies, that was a good spot. So, <laughs> so uh, they're like big mama, but um, if you look closely, if you know how to look, read the Latin longs, you're only talking about not even half a K difference in the in those areas, maybe 300 metres, 200 metres. There's, does everyone know how the artificial reef works up there? Does anyone know, not know about the artificial reef up there? A lot of people don't actually. Okay, so it's, it's, they put in these big pipe, uh, concrete pipe things. I don't know the size of them, but some people say they're like the dive, it's like half the size of a bus or a minivan, and they're hollow, and they're like concrete things. Um, and the jewies obviously, when they bust us off, they go inside the, the pipe down to the side and then just cut off. Um, there's heaps of growth on it, um, and they're strategically placed in different areas throughout, and there's, I think there's 20 something, uh, lots of, 20, not 20 individual ones, but 20 individual clumps of them. So maybe three or four in a, in a group, uh, placed or around the joint there. So there's about five or six spots in here that um, are probably my best of those 20. And every time we go out, we sort of look around a little bit when we have time, and we sometimes find another one that's, because I think some of them might be getting a bit covered up. Um, but we seem to find more, more uh, clumps of, um, of blocks. But they're really good. Has so anyone fished there yet at all? Only getting bait on my boat. Only getting bait, yeah. It's a very good bait spot on the way to go out offshore. So everyone goes, what we were saying before, everyone goes out that way to get their bait. 
If you're going to go north, east, fish in 36s or 50s, go that way, go to the blocks and get your bait. It's on the way, you don't waste time going that way a little bit. And the fish, are, there's heaps of bait there. And there's so many other people there catching it. So, But if they first say netting it now, I don't know. Mm. I didn't know they were doing that. I'm not happy. <laughs> Is that right? Mm. Um, okay, I'll just quickly go through these marks while we look at this down for, for sure. So let's just go back to the first page, guys. So 2757, remember the seaway is on 2756, that's the latitude. So that's one mile south of the seaway, not even, not even that. And that's um, in on that area that they really do hammer hard with the um, nets. That's a 12 fathom reef off sort of seawall. Um, the next one is that one of the blocks up north there, it says snapper. Um, the next one is out a bit further from the 12 fathom reef. So this is the, the, the pinnacles they call off Southport, which is 17 to 18 fathoms. The third mark there is the southern end of the pinnacle. The next mark is sort of mid of the pinnacles. That's the fourth mark. Um, the fifth mark is out a little bit further. It's still part of the pinnacles, but it's also south a bit and out a bit further than the other ones. And the sixth mark is um, getting up to, um, oh, oh no, sorry, that's one of the blocks. That's one of the blocks. <laughs> Six marks on the blocks, northeast. Seven marks on the blocks. Next one is Sully's Reef, the John was talking about earlier, off the jumping pin, north of the jumping pin. Great spot, daytime there. Just fishing the exact same way, but you'll get in there right till all day. Nine, 10 o'clock in the day, trying not to go live baits. And it's normally, normally a howling west this time of year up there, but it's good fishing. Because it's fairly deep on the sullies too, Yeah, it's 52 metres. Yeah. 52 yeah. metres deep. You get oh, oh, heaps of trag there and stuff like that as well. And snapper, it's a good snapper. Um, the one that says southeast of Jumping Pin, that one's uh, really a spot that's a cotton sort of. Um, the, I think it's a, yeah, the sort of southern end of the cotton roof. That's the last one. Let's go to the second page. Um, 7.55. So that one there is just a tiny bit north of the seaway. It's like the most northern end of the um, of the pinnacles off the seaway in 17 to 18 fathoms. It's sort of 32 metres deep. Um, the next one's just south a bit of it. Uh, the next one, the third one, that one's actually um, one of the blocks. So is um, the next one's one of the blocks again, but it's a little bit further out. So just east of the blocks. Um, I saw a guy fishing there many years ago when I fished the block stand for probably 10 years or 8 years but uh, there's a guy, there was always a light out there <laughs> about a mile out, slightly north of the blocks and out a bit further and so one day, one day I went looking out there, he wasn't there that night, just went looking around the room and we found a little bit, it must be a little bit of iron reef there like the pinnacle sort of thing and uh, we pulled big jewies up there and big snapper too, even at night and that's that mark which is the, um, uh, the second page uh, number four. Um, the next one is um, also, it's the most, actually it is in, it's sort of just, okay. First one here, 2755, that's the most northern extremity of the pinnacles of Southport. This one here is about a mile south, but it's, it, the, the pinnacles of Southport run for about uh, four, four k's, and they're quite the clump together, and there's lots of marks in that clump. If you go to Navionics app and look on Navionics app, um, that's that, that thing there on the bottom of the page. If you haven't got it, you should put it on your phone. I'd recommend putting it on your phone or your iPad. It's about 35 bucks a year or 37 bucks a year. It's better than anything on your GPS. And you can see all the contours um, in 3D, uh, what, what we're talking about here. Um, the sixth one, 2747, 132.32. So that one there is uh, just south of the jumping pin but out on the 24s, which is a cotton reef. Also a great spot for snapper and jewies. Um, the next last line, 2757. So that one there is uh, similar to some of those marks on the first page on the outside edge of the, of the pinnacles of Southport, as is the next one, and as is the next one. So, oh, sorry, the last one's are another one of the blocks, sorry. See how many blocks here? You got one, two, three. There's more marks than I thought. Three, four, 
five. You got five marks there. Okay. You got five marks of the blocks, which are all good marks. So you should better get two boats per block. So that's ten <laughs> boats. That's half. Of, <laughs> half of here is there. <laughs> and us other ten, we'll just keep drifting past you. Okay. <laughs> the one either side of you. So that'll be twenty boats. <laughs> Do you normally anchor at the box? Uh, I do, mate, if, if it's windy and I don't have electric, or um, if, the, if the bait's scattered a bit, and like if it's scattered and um, like this here, like I'm saying, like this here, and I do a drift over it, and if I find one area is fishing better than the, the other two areas, and they're focusing on just that one area, biting in that one area, because yeah. uh, you always watch, you always have a track on your GPS, particularly at nighttime. And always mark them. So you get that bite, you mark it. You get one of the boys to put an icon on the screen. Um, I'll do maybe a second drift. Um, if I don't get a bite, um, then I maybe might not anchor. I'll keep drifting around. Uh, but if I get a second bite and it's on the same area again, then I'll definitely anchor it or use the electric because that's where they're feeding them. Good air. What's Basically. between the blocks, sand? Ah, uh, sand. No reef. So you, how are you anchoring? Uh, in sand. I use a, um, one of those um, fold out sort of spade prong yeah. things. Yeah, reef anchor doesn't hold, but that will, no. that sort of holds. Unless you're on the block. Yeah, but it, uh, yeah, there's sort of block, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Night. Well, you could reverse that one and pull it back off, you know. Mm. Um, but yeah, if you've got a reef anchor, that should bend out on the block, I guess. Yeah. But sand anchor will, will be like. Uh, when you use it, when you're anchoring too, I'll show you need to allow like double the depth of line out. so. You're in 30 metres, you need 60 metres of rope out. So allow yourself to go up a bit further and come back. Yeah. Okay, so we've got it there, we've got our live bait and we're fishing away and I showed you how to do it. You feel the bite, boom, 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 bang, got it. Fight it, get it up. There is a bit of problem there with sharks at times and everywhere actually, even at the front end as well. So you need to be quick on that gaff uh, and get them in. Um, and night time with jigs doesn't seem to work. Um, how many people are into jigging at the moment? No one? As in micro-jigging. As in micro-jigging for yeah. jewies, yeah. yeah. Have you tried it for jewies at all yet? No, it's very good. So Mick Horn, who currently works for Rapala, he's um, been doing really well on these Kenseki jigs. If you follow him on Facebook, follow him on Facebook. He's, he's very good. His name's Mick Horn. Okay, H-O-R-N-E. I think it's H-O-R-N. Um, and there's this type of thing here on micro-jigs. Um, and flutter style type jigs, like that type of thing. Fishing early morning, so at first light, and uh, and just slow working them on the blocks, and and smacking the jigs. They get they get their bag on them easy, and as you let them go. Um, so they're taking jigs as well. Um, so I don't get any further jigs. Any questions on the bait at all, guys? I'm going to rig up these ones here. They're nearly nearly defrosted. A bit longer. <laughs> we'll do that last. Um, but that's. The baits. How you fish with the baits? Okay, simple that. Okay, with the with the soft plastics, they do take soft plastics in the seaway and uh, offshore. Um, I tend to don't use much of my paddle tails unless they're really big, but I tend to use a lot of that type of thing. Okay. Sorry, I should pass off. Is a power bait, but anything gold power bait, uh, whatever, whatever, those sort of things. Nemesis in the eight, uh, six, six and a half inch Nemesis. I think the big curl tail is really good for jewies. You want to use it on a fairly big jig head and a fairly big hook. Remember, these look like big jig heads, but the hook size is actually smaller than using the live baits. And you want at least uh, three quarter ounce to get it down there, okay? You don't want it too, too high in the water column because you get Mac tuna. Don't like Mac tuna. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, getting back to that, someone asked earlier about sinker size. So when there's a bit of wind or a little bit of current, which is not much current there, but more wind and driftage um, and your baits coming up, and if you use some big baits, they're a problem. They keep um, wanting to swim back to the boat, so it's up their backside so for a bit of cover. So um, you need to hold him down and pin him on the bottom because they're an easy target for the big fish. So I tend to use a big ball, like about a nine or an eight. Seven's the smallest I've used on my liveys. So I'm using big baits like tail or, or big slimies, I'm using about an eight to a ten ball. And straight on top of the head. Okay. Or even something like the glow sinkers. That type of thing. Yeah. Four ounce, which is pretty heavy. Um, 
those hooks you got in your bag, guys, they're really good. They're Shinto hooks. Um, these are Japanese steel. They're really good quality. Very, very sharp. Okay. Be careful they don't get in you. Um, if you are going to cast, say, around the rock wall, the seaway, or even out, out there, you could do a long cast, leave your bail arm open, let it sink to the bottom so it's pulling line off the, off the bail while it's going down. But you could try just slow winding a paddle tail over the top of the blocks, like this type of thing, or the bigger brother. I dare think they'd work as well. Um, like lure fishing is fantastic, you know. This type of thing here, I reckon they'd even have a shot at something like that. Um, which is... <laughs> She's obviously a fishing girl and likes yeah. fishing. She yes. loves fishing. Yeah, loves fishing. <laughs> so... How do you have the wine, So, you want a fairly decent um, jig head and... Harvard is, can't see what they're So, a lot of people say, just with the soft plastic super the way, with something different left field, but do we run the hook that way or do we run it that way? Um, when the fish are on the bite and, and I've only got them down my last plastics, I'll try and get like, say, flatties for example. Um, I'll go that way, and when it wears that bad, it won't. If he's sliding down, I'll turn it that way, and I still catch the same amount of fish. Yeah. It's a relative, but the hook up onto the point tends to be a bit more if it's on the same way. Okay, does that make sense? So I reckon that for Jewies would definitely uh, work. That's just my, my thinking. I'll get the way tonight and someone can try it and let me know how it goes. Um, these are a new prawn out. But Jewies love, Jewies love prawns. And uh, a lot of guys do catch Jewies uh, fishing for flatties on prawn type lures. And um, I reckon these would be really good as well. Rigged up right as well. I'll pass those around too. But, Soft plastics are definitely a dewy catcher, but micro jigging seems to be the go as well. Pass a couple of these around too. Yeah, night still good with the plastic? Ah, uh, no. No, never, put, never put them on lures at night time. They get them on lures on, off the rocks at night time down south, yeah. and the dewies feed on the surface, like in the broadwood I've seen them feeding with the dolphins on mullet around wave break and on the edge of the south wall. And they feed, they smash them, huh? you see them smashing the bait. Got colour any difference on the plastics? Uh, I like white seems to be the go for Jewies more than anything, pearl white. Uh, but more natural colours, I just probably think it's not too bad as well. Uh, squidgies do a couple of good colours too in their in their curl tail range, like that type of thing there. That'd be more of a seaway one. It's rain and salt. Um, but they'll work, that sort of thing. That's about the smaller size I'd use on Jewies, so. though. Yeah. And, um, any questions on that at all, folks? Oh, there is one other thing I want to show you. Sorry, real quick before I get to your questions. Um, this is a, they're very expensive, these things. Um, I know BCF copied it, but this is the original mustard ink bait. Has anyone used those at all yet? They're like an Oki. They've actually got a little sachet of ink that you put onto it, and when it, when the water um, breaks it down, in when you start jigging it, it puts out a black plume of ink into the water, and that's normally when the obviously when something's a, a real lock is scared, it takes off and throws the ink. They get nailed. So they're really good. They work extremely good on snapper pearlies, everything. But I'd reckon the Jewies would smack that. But they are almighty expensive. Your like price is like thirty-four bucks. You know. Not expensive. Um, okay. Wire. Second last thing to do tonight before we do the bait, and then that's it. We're all done. 
Leon, you did that one still talking. Yeah. Don't get yourself in the eye. Uh, about, about three days off now. Um, so, guys, any questions at all so far? Yes. Yeah, so um, I have used it before there, mate. Um, yeah. I've used it, but it's been a bit rough. Oh, yeah. So just to try and keep the, I mean, it's like three quarter pound lead or whatever, yeah. or a, a one pound even, three quarters generally, um, to try and keep it all intact. I'm running 80 pound lead or 100 pound lead, yeah. and uh, running, I'm actually cutting my my loop, so it's a single one with two hooks yeah. snelled on it. Yeah. Same I do for kings and amateur. Okay. You've got to cut the bottom one, I think it is. Cut one, if you cut the wrong way, it falls out. <laughs> I think it's the bottom one. You live one. my experience. Yeah, you live my experience, yeah, basically pull it out. Uh, or use the three ways swivel. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, rigging the baits up. I'm just going to put these baits on here and uh, I'll be better if I had a couple of hooks nailed up. Are you typically marking all of these jukes? Yes, you are, mate. Yeah, so they look just like that. It looks just like that. They're on the bait and they're normally bigger fish above the bait or just through the top of the bait. Yeah, like they could be hiding in the crevices, which they quite often will be. Uh, but jewies are very uh, easy to see on the sound. I think it's because that bladder inside them. Yeah. So they, if you don't see them on there, they're not on there. <laughs> they're trying to move on to the next spot and have a look. Yeah, yeah it's very rare that I would try a spot for jew that if I can't see them. Yeah. In the daytime when you're offshore. Yep. Um, 25 metres, yep. 25 metres. Oh, in saying that, like there's a, I haven't put it on here. Does anyone know about the dragon at all? Yeah. Heard about it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, the dragon's off, um, again. so. <laughs> I said we're talking about flies again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, we're talking about off, um, just north of jumping pin about, it's only about, uh, 18 or 20 metres deep or something like that. Um, there's plenty of jewels there. And uh, the Aquarius off the Southport here. Does anyone know about the Aquarius at all? So it's a trawl that's on Dead Man's Bank on the north, far northern end of it. So um, unless the swell's beautiful, you always go around to 20 metres and come back into eight or 10 metres deep. It's only very shallow. And um, I've caught jewels off there as well, particularly just on dark and really big ones. But this, they get in the wheelhouse, same as they do down up at the Aquarius, up at the, uh, the Dragon, they go through the wheelhouse and chop you off and whatever else. I'll just quickly cut this, this reel off here. Yeah, so um, that's a good question. And I these days I go in the when the weather's good and the swell allows me to get offshore. Uh, this is offshore. So... Um, I always thought, and, and I always know I do really well on the lead up to the full moon, because the moon rises, as soon as that moon rises, if you can time it right at the moment, which is right on dark, uh, that's the best time. And the bite period is really good. If you've got a moon rise at like 7 at night, you will get a bite right on dark. And then I'll go a little bit quiet, and as soon as that moon rises, like an hour later, half hour later, you get a second bite, 100%. Um, but I've gone out there on the dark nights and still smack them. So... Yeah, it's, uh, I think it's, it, it get the right weather, but in that three or four month period, which is now, it doesn't seem to really matter too much. You might get a better bite, but you still get fish regardless, most times. Yeah. Okay, so, so these are our seven O's, I think, looking at this. So I'll get a lot of you out of here. Okay, this is about probably the size of most of yak. It's a big pilly that, so we use that as an example. Um, and I'd use seven oh hooks on that size. So it depends on um, how you hold the fish. So we all know yakas have got spikes and they spike the crap out of us trying to hold them. They can slime in, they curl up and they fall over your hand, pick it up again. Have another shot. Then you need to put the hook through it because it's annoying you. But but generally speaking <laughs> Generally speaking, you just go through here like I was saying before and just curl the hook around and stick it out like so. So can we all see how that looks? Okay. I'll pass it around a sec. And let's just imagine the fish are really on the chew. So I'll just go straight through here. When I go through here though, I'll always hold his neck because sometimes the hook's a little bit, it's it like that, see that snapped? Yeah. You do his neck. Okay, yeah, kill him, exactly right. 
So we're not going to go that way. We're going to go downwards now. <laughs> I'll just kill that guy. But it can go that way. It can go down or it can go up. But if you're going to go up, you need to hold the neck. The up's better because the hook's at the harder part at the top and it's harder to pull the hook out. If you go the other way, it's through the softer part in the bottom and it can, it can pull out easier. But you need to hold his neck so it's a snap. Um, put that on there and pass it around. So just that could be a little herring or can be a 40 centimetre tailor. Oops, that's how we do it. Right, I'll do it. But you can have that hook up or down at the front, doesn't matter. When you tailor, do you cut I, their tails a little bit to um, make them injured? Um, no, I don't. I don't because the sinker generally holds them in, in place. Yeah, holds them in place, ready to be chomped. Yeah. So the neck doesn't normally snap like that. Sorry about that, guys. Do you want me to do a, um, a bigger bait or that, that would do? Okay, just imagine the neck's not bad. Sorry about that. Okay, come back to here. Ian, uh, Liam, have a go, mate. Got three metres there, buddy? Okay, cool. Okay, I just need to get a spare scissors. This might do properly. That's fine. Yep. Okay, so what I do here, this is my bit of wire I've got on the boat. Do I go use some mackerel fishing or do So you just bend a little bit over like so. You need to make that quite tight. Just like so. And I need some lighter line. So just imagine this is my braid or whatever it might be. My leader off my braid, doesn't matter. So all you do is you just tie it onto this little loop here. Oops, let's see it'll be better. In the meantime, your mate's pulling up a fish and you're like, wait. Guys, just when you're anchoring up too, just please don't just tuck the anchor out and go to the back and throw your rods in water, which we all want to do. You have to wait. You have to. Someone has to be on the throttle and keep the nose into the wind and and get that anchor down properly. Um, then you can all fish and happily enjoy it. Otherwise, you get down the back and in the meantime, your chain's overridden your anchor and it's all wrapped up and and you look at your position on the GPS and you're drifted like 100 metres of it. And it takes a lot longer to redo that again than, than actually doing it right at the start. So just like that, I just, just tied my leader to the end there. Sorry, Greg, it's for you down the back, mate. Okay. Thanks, mate. <laughs> so straight... You probably need binoculars. <laughs> straight down the hole. And we just push it up. Leave you on this part, mate, because you're pretty good at doing this. Okay, we've got a problem, Houston. Dave, you were saying. <laughs> Sorry. Man. Yeah, it probably is actually. You're probably right. Yeah, smash the light. So you just push it up. Is it there? Yep. Yeah, there you go. So that's it. Just like that. As quick as that. And then, <laughs> and then you're in. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now is... Uh, oh, I've lost my line, I think. No, you've got oh, the line's on the other end, sorry. That's right. I've got to keep pulling. What I want to do is I want to um, tie a, that bait jig. Is anyone that little tiny bait jig down the back with the like, flasher type uh, little rainbow no. film on it? If you don't mind, mate, absolute gentleman. Thank you, sir. What's that TV show where they prove the real or not real? I don't remember the name of it. Mythbusters. That's it, Mythbusters. Here we go. 
A lot of people ask too which which ends the right end because a lot of these things to say to put on that end like I say top and bottom but I, most of it's the wrong way around so this one I just I just I'll say the top this is the right one oh that's no, the wrong one I want to keep that little thing there to put my sinker on right it's got that little thing on the end there the snap hook yeah the snap hook but at the same time if I turn it up the other way the hook hangs skew with so the hook's always got to hang down okay Okay, well, you definitely sold me a dodgy one. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, mate. I saw you coming, Greg. <laughs> Let's take the time up just real quickly. So, we've got the snap sword at this end, so we're going to put the swivel through, which is quite a bit chunky thing. Pull it back out the other end now, so the bait jig's going down internal. Oh, sorry. Oh, the wire's still in there. So, Greg was right, there is one sticking out. Why is that one sticking out? Oh, you're right, mate. Was that about how much yours is sticking out? Yeah, about that. Yeah, that's that you know there's one in there. Yeah. It's on purpose. There's a reason for that. <laughs> it's just a swivel, actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you see this right, sitting right there, but generally speaking, you're, you're right, it's about six centimetres too long. So you put the swivel right at the. I put the. I normally have, like, um, either I cut that off and just tie a sinker on. Okay, yeah, so the. Like, yeah, so. It looks like this. So get rid of that. I don't like sinkers and bottom, swivel and bottom in here. Unless I'm using those sinkers with the. Um, uh, swivel with the, with the loop on, or the sinkers with the wire end on it. Or swivel the end. I think that's what they do, Craig. They give you a little bit extra just in case you want to use it. Yeah, because you'll see now it'll just fly straight up there. I think you'll make enough as you go along. Well, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is, I never had that problem, but mine always sit up there tight. Lou, just want sort to of hold that for a sec. This is the weight of the sink in it. Just watch the hook there. So, this is obviously attached to my reel, so it goes right up the other. So, that's how it sits in the, in the boat. Yeah. And the bait jig's inside. And then when you drop it out, I'm just call it a carpet. Let it bounce around too much because it often breaks off the line. Ah, uh, it's also good not. <laughs> but it comes out easy as as is. And it comes in easy as well. Oh. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And I like to tie a wide wrap around the sink that you really want it in the boat. So yeah. Around yeah. Yeah. Look to, yeah, okay, that's a good idea too. Yeah. yeah. But that's how it work. And oh, you all know about that now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Liam. Still <laughs> Greg, I'll modify your next bait jig for you, mate. <laughs> um, okay, so guys, any questions at all on anything here? Just one thing, handling a fish. So you get the jury into the boat. Um, do you all know that obviously juries and cods, and that they've got those gill rakes that you can smash your hands at? My hand's always cut at the top. But... Um, if you go for the most furthest up part, so don't start too far down the back of the gills, you're gonna get a photo or just wanna grab it and put it into the esky. Go right up to the top of the gill where it joins on, just inside its mouth here, right, right, closest to its lips. That's where you grab it. And you don't rarely get um, chafed by the gills. And then obviously take your photo or put it in the esky, what you're gonna do. Uh, do you, you bleed uh, do fish? Um, I, do and I don't, it depends how busy we are at the time. Yeah, it doesn't make much difference to the flesh because they're, they're not really a bloody type fish. They're pretty white meat and very nice to eat. So, yeah. So the larger ones don't have any... Worms? Yeah. Uh, so worms, uh, the ones in the seaway are definitely the smaller ones may have. 
The bigger ones are rarely. The one of the four we got the other day had a little bit of worm in its back and its tail, um, but you just cut them out or cook them up, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Protein, protein. Um, but they're not too bad. And they're, what I mean by worms is just like a quite a, probably about the size of matchstick, and they're white mm. and they're a bit curly. Right. And yeah. They're not dangerous to. No, they're protein. Yeah. yeah, no, not dangerous to eat, no. But but you just <laughs> but you just cut you cut the section out. If, yeah. But and big two, anything over sort of meter, um, they're, they're less um, less there. But under a meter, you, especially little school drew up the rivers years ago, when they're only fifty centimeters legal size, always uh, lots of worms. Yeah. I seem to um, get rid of them as they get bigger. Do they release okay if you do? Yeah. So. Um, <laughs> When we catch them, I do go hard the first uh, five or ten metres, particularly because it's quite a rough area on the, on the 12,000 reef where you're, uh, 15, uh, 17,000 reef. On the pinnacles, it's quite rough there. Or on the blocks, it's quite aggressive too on the bottom, so you need to get them up a bit, so it does knock them around a little bit. Um, so we generally will, will never, once we've got a couple in the boat, we, if we've got enough, we just stop fishing. Oh, okay. And yeah. come back, and generally a lot of times we'll get there. We've got our leave at four thirty or quarter past four. Um, it does take long to get your bait, ten minutes, fifteen minutes if they're on, and we're sitting there waiting for fifteen minutes for the bite. You might get the odd one, but generally you've got to wait. The sun goes down. It's five thirty. Next minute, bang, bang, bang. You got a couple or three or whatever, four, whatever you want, and it's your home by seven o'clock. Back at back at home, sitting in the house. Yeah. No, it's, it's serious. <laughs> Lee, is that the case? Yeah. yeah. Often, isn't it? First it, drop. First drop is straight yeah. on. It, and this is the time of the year to do it. But they generally school that one. Yeah, they are. That's why they're easy to catch. Well. Yeah, yeah. So, Jewies are very um, like pilchers, but massive size. <laughs> they're really intermingled and they all follow each other around like squid. <laughs> they go around big circles, I think, around the reef as well. They'll, they'll be there and then they'll. They'll disappear after you see a bit of disappear, and sometimes, as I said, you get them out in the paddock out here somewhere because they've, they've moved off there, but then they'll come back again. Yeah. And I would dare think the average school, I'm guessing, looking at the sound, is probably 15 or 20 fish. Yeah. But they talk. Yeah. So, with, with the daylight going down and if the tide isn't at that time, you still fish that? 100%, mate. Yeah. Yep. So, as I said, um, most of our trips are because not because of the tide, but if it's the weather allows us to get out there, um, and we still seem to catch them. I don't think we ever got it that night time. We've not ever caught them. Do you actually sound them throughout the day to say, like, well, if you're going to bait? Yep. Would you just go back to where the bait was? Um, later at that yeah, so you can go get your bait during the day and, and then go out right on dark if you wanted to. Yeah. Um, you could. Uh, you'll probably see them maybe on the sound at and during the day, theoretically they should still be there, right? Mm. But I think they hide a little bit. They sleep or whatever they do at the daytime. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I see guys up on those blocks and out the front here in like four metre tinnies. So, yeah. so anyone here's got a boat under 4.5? Yeah, how big's your boat, mate? 4.3, but it's yeah. a twin Yeah, that, that's fine, yeah. It yeah, leans is only 4.3 and that'll be, that's fine too. 35 till long boat. Uh, really? Yeah. I go heaps. Okay, no, that's fine. So um, again, just choose the weather. Choose your weather. Okay, I think that's about it then, guys. So no other questions? No, I'm good. Okay. Um, sorry, sorry. Back, back to the weather. These blocks. Huh. That what's like? Okay, you know, so Westley, yeah, like, uh, Westleys. If you have got sort of twenty knots, they'll they'll be pretty choppy out there. Mm -hmm. So that wind looks so beautiful on the coastline. You get out about. 12 fathom reef, so chaos shore, starting to get rough. Yeah. And then, um, and then once you get out, oh, sorry, all good? Oh, sorry? Oh, no, we're about to, go, we're not done. Uh, but yeah, so Wesley, um, anything over 20 knots, it kicks in about a chaos shore. Yeah. Looks nice before then. And, and you can fish up the 30 knots of Wesley right on the edge of the shoreline if it's not a swirl, mm -hmm. like the tail and stuff like that. Yeah. But once you get out, it's ugly. And it's always nice going with it once you turn around you're like, holy crap. Yeah. Um, but up there, we generally face the northeast a lot of the time and go out in the afternoon. 
see it banging away up there, but it always drops out around night so it gets dark. Yeah, that's calm coming back. Yeah. Okay, um, that's probably about it. Thanks. So, guys, give it a go. Just be careful at night time. I suggest maybe getting out there early morning for a stint, um, but you won't get fish until you get the bait fish. So, you either got to get it the night before and keep it live somewhere, uh, or you um, just wait for that sun to come up. You still get fish, but you won't get as many. And, and then when you know the area, then maybe go back in the afternoon and fish at the night. You don't have to fish until 7 o'clock and you're done. Yeah. Okay. Oh, sorry, the video. I'm going to show you the video. Sorry, Liam. Liam's going to show the place video. So someone just flicked that light switch if you don't mind the gas. Oh, sorry, guys. It's nothing to do. All those gas in the corners you walk up, please grab one on the way out. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, there's never enough gas, I can assure you that. <laughs> yeah, please, mate. Thank you, mate. Cheers. There's a switch there, gentlemen. That's it. Okay. So, uh, this is how the morning is, Liam. So, this is about when we're trying it then in the morning. Now, these guys here, they're not fishing for two. <laughs> they're uh, trying to get bait, uh, but they won't. Let's see, see what the signal is like. They're trying to get bait. Um, before, but they won't get much at even at that stage. The light is still a little bit too early. Do you want to play it? Mate? So that day is a little bit of northerly blind, northwest. So it's probably only around about eight to ten knots, but it's a little bit choppy. So you can see the sun's oh, it's, in the, it's just starting to rise. Has everyone seen this before? Uh, so, not seen so if you follow our YouTube page, you'll we do lots of sort of stuff. You see the sun's just cracking there. So all those guys here, they're getting live baits and going out to um, to the fifties fishing for kings. They weren't fishing for Julius up we were. And Liam goes, I said, Liam, I said, just drop your bait down. He goes, there's boats here. I said, just drop it down. And he goes, throw it out. I got down and fight. That was straight on. And um, so you see, it's given Liam a bit of a hard time there to start with. I think you're using it a Salter Sailing, or what are you using it? Oh, Stratic. Stratic, is it? Oh, Stratic 5000, sorry. With 30 pound braid. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's, on the blocks, yeah. that's on the blocks, yeah. I'm trying to get the gap out. <laughs> it's always tangled up, right? And you get a big fish on it. <laughs> In the net, or something like that. Watch out for the camera now. Yeah, so that's probably around about an eight or ten kilo, I guess, or maybe a bit bigger. So that's about the average size out there. As I said, you don't get anything under a metre, and normally they're around a metre ten. It's just a different angle, seasick angle. So they come up like this to the top, they'll do a big turn up, they'll come up this float there and go grunk, 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 grunk. Always try and do a head shot, don't do a middle shot because they'll try and turn on the on the gap. You need to just pull his head through that water. Yeah, so that's what it's like guys. It's probably maybe yeah, it's probably maybe ten kilo. So, uh, I'll just get your hand up on anything. I think we'll go to the next one now, Liam. That'd be better. Yeah. Put your hand up. Right so, up just, you can see it's a little 5,000 stratics. That's about as yeah. light as we'll fish out there. And have a bit of fun. I think it's this one here, the yeah. blue one. Uh, this one here is just a blunt gaff. <laughs> I can't play it. 
No. What's the kids playing piano? Um, as big as Liam is, he's a very good pianist. <laughs> oh, no, it's deep water fishing. Uh, I might need to get more. I was going to show the one we did the other morning when it got those four fish. And um, as soon as we pulled up, they were just straight on. Just uh, we'll get out of it. No, it's okay. Sorry, guys. Next time. <laughs> but you'll see in the, in the I'll put it on Facebook in the next couple of days. But when um when I'm uh, when we get out there, my mate Wayne drops his bait down, I'm still rigging up, and so is Stewie. And next minute. He's already got one on, and I quickly let him fight it. And I said, "You'll be right for a minute." So I quickly tie my line up and get my light bait on, chuck it down, and uh, and then he's going, "It's here." So the, thanks a lot, mate. And then we're gaffing the I'm gaffing his fish with the plunko, and then um, the my rod slammed over and it was on as well. And then we dropped a couple straight up and off the bottom. Like I said they've sort of moved and got some more again. So you have to try and keep them attached to your line and out of the water. Okay, guys, thank you very much. Ah, okay, the prizes. <coughs> thank you, Lee. Well done. Okay, so the first prize is, um, I want you to catch this. I think it's about only 300 bucks worth, I think. There's a lot of jigs and all types and, and some braid. No, fill it nice. Okay, fill it nice. You need an 8 inch blade when you fill it in two weeks. Don't use a little pizzazz, a little okay. 6 inch blade, okay? Big fish. <clears throat> this is number two, I'll probably go on the screen. <laughs> Sorry, Dave. <laughs> it's number eight. Yeah. Well done, mate. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. Good to see you, young fellow. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, Serious? Seven? Oh, well done. <laughs> um, that was about two hundred dollars. Cheers, mate. An eight-inch knife, and a big knife, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, next one then. I don't want to get in trouble. If it's six, I probably do a backflip. Well, that was lucky. 22. <laughs> well done, matey. Yeah. Well, that's about up. 100 and something dollars worth. You're doing well, mate. Yes. Thank you. Cheers. Um, next one's about 100 bucks worth, I think. Sorry, well, yeah. Guys, thanks for coming along. Um, just give a shout out on seminars. We are going to do, because we've obviously got Snapper closure, and we're going to revise Snapper on just before the 16th. So to give an update what's happening. We will probably go ahead and see what's happening on the fish scene before that time. Uh, 25. Yeah. Well done, let's see that. You run a nice one, The last one's the last one. Yeah, my Uncle Dave. Yeah. Always comes back. This Thank one. you. Thank you. <laughs> Just joking. Okay. Um, so, and then we're doing flathead. So flathead, we're doing two flathead seminars this time. We're doing one on something different. We're doing one on hard bodies, which means casting and trolling, and then we're doing the next seminar on um, soft plastics. Number 10. Oh, well done. I found it if you want to watch it. Oh, you found it. Okay, good. We'll put that on right after we finish this one. Thanks, mate. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well done, my friend. And I'm trying hard to. <laughs> 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 uh, oh my gosh, you can't believe this. I just said I'm trying hard. Number two. <laughs> <laughs> I felt I felt the vibes. Oh, we got the last ones. It's a dread. Sorry about that, buddy. Yeah. But everyone else to come along. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm just going to quickly play this video. I'm going to turn that. Do you mind turn off my friend? No. Thank you. Don't keep your gas on the way out, too, guys. Oh, this could be. You got it there? Yeah. You reckon? Just sit here and watch the dark.
So guys, we are open for about half an hour at the max. You're welcome to just grab it in if you want. Everything we talked about tonight, Steve sent off to you guys. Well done, man. You can't, mate. So this is my mate, but Wayne's boat here. We've got the blunt gaff on. <laughs> oh, man, I'll tell you. It's, it just wouldn't go in. Uh, and I never miss. I never miss. I always gaff my own fish. Finally got it. Here's the other ones taken off over here. <laughs> and you can see, um, this is... Actually, this might have been the sec the last two fish, sorry. This is the last two, because we're out there in the dark. This is the last two fish. So this is probably around about um, 7, 7.30 maybe, in the morning. And um, I think this fish is only about a metre five, a metre eight maybe. It's probably the smallest one of the day. Yeah, so we just moved to this spot. As I said to you, they were, they were on, you know, to where we went, but because it's getting like eight o'clock in the day, they already sort of aren't going to be quiet. Well, they weren't going quite there, but they went quiet up there because we dropped one or two of these again. Stewie said, let me gap it. And I said, no way. <laughs> <laughs> So that's about as small as you get out there. I think it's about a metre five or a metre eight. Yeah. So that's how they, how quick they bite it there when they're on. That's what I'm trying to show you guys. Yeah. The first two we didn't do it because it was dark, so I didn't really feel it in the dark. It's very hard to feel in the dark. Um, but everyone, thank you so much for coming along. Good luck out there. Be safe. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and just be careful this weekend that, that Wesley that was meant to blow 30 knots today didn't, but I think it will on the weekend coming in Saturday. So, I know. Uh, so, um, just be careful out there. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Don't get your gaffs on the way out, guys. I'll come downstairs too. Thanks, Lee. Good job. I'm trying to put that in the freezer, but I don't mind. I can't get that one around. Oh, is that Pilcher going around too, guys? Is that somewhere down the back? Yeah, yeah. Get it done.